I'm Rita. We're here with the Backstage Betty Pages with Travis Meeks. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Um, can you take us to, through, just to get everybody up to date, um, kind of a musical history that you've been through? I started playing uh, music uh, from the age of 11. Um, then I got in a band pretty quick um, called Bad Dreams. It was from a couple guys. Actually, it was one guy from uh, the, the first days of a new band I had. And then, anyways, it evolved into another band called Dead Reckoning, um, which was a metal band. And uh, basically, that was it. And then it was Days of a New. I just kind of created it on the spot. Wrote the uh, first album, sitting in a basement. and. Uh, was that? Yeah. Um, were you born a musician or was this something that developed? I mean, I obviously you said musician, you started yeah. young. Yeah. My father's a musician. My mom's dad is a musician. So both males on both sides of the family. Yeah. Uh, my mom is a music lover. Uh, she was very supportive of my dad. Like She's a flower child, hippie girl. Um, very deep and intuitive. And my grandma is a piano player. My mom's mom, my other grandmother, was a jazz lounge singer. You know, like Ethel Merman type shite. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of music in the family. Yeah. What do you think your influences are musically? Like, was there a certain band growing up that really caught your fancy or? I, I kept evolving, mm -hmm. basically, um, different ages. Uh, it, was, it was a spiritual growth, basically. The more my spirit grew, the, I went through different stages of music. And now, um, a couple of years ago, I went off and bought all the records that I've ever listened to from four or five years old. So I've got the whole collection. I don't care if it's Michael Jackson to... Striper to yeah. Motley Crue to Guns N' Roses. I bought it all and I'll listen to it and I'll go, oh wow, I got a melody from that, you know, that little doodle or something because it got stuck in my head or, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so, but right, bef right after I actually I was cutting the Orange album, that was my first record that was released. Um, in Nashville, Tennessee, and I discovered Dead Can Dance. And I was really, I had an image very similar to that, that I was trying to go towards. And once I heard that, it like gave me hope and clarity of like a direction for myself that I could do something it was original on my own and yeah. it's been really tough it's tough these days because it's like the world is the opposite of that yeah yeah and can you take us through like your writing process it that changes it's yeah. it's very personal you know it's like uh like you said you get inspired by maybe an album you're listening to or yeah you know writing um Honestly, uh, I feed off other people's energy the best. If I have people in a room, instead of playing songs for them, mm -hmm. I like to write a song while they're in the room, feed off their energy, and try to absorb and be a sponge off these energies and take it in. You know, it's kind of like being a vampire, but they're willing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I like to write when people are around. If not. Um, Honestly, uh, when I haven't had sleep, yeah, yeah, when I haven't had sleep, I get this kind of delirium mode of uh, this energetic mode where my OCD is set to the side, my normal brain functioning patterns are set to the side, and uh, I get in this other way of thinking that. 
enables me not to think so much. Yeah. You know, because when you're writing, you can't. It's like you gotta shut yourself off to allow all the energies to come in, so you can create. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you try to control it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work very well. So at least that's my experience. Yeah. Can't speak for everybody else. Um, with your albums, um, the self-titles, and then pulling the colors, and with them, also the tree being on the albums, what is symbolism to you, and how big of a part has that been in the music writing? You mean, what is the tree? Well, symbolism in general, like I know colors can be symbols to people, or the tree, the tree, yeah. Well, the colors, uh, it, that was an evolution, you know, uh, like the first record, reminded me of a western vibe. Mm -hmm. Second record kind of reminded me of a Celtic vibe. Third record was supposed to be kind of like a Phantom of the Opera vibe. Um, but, uh, yeah, so yeah, basically, it's like when you play a video game mm -hmm. or when you're reading books and you have different chapters, um, they change your world and your surrounding and your environment. Yeah. Um, and like, it's like Mario Brothers, you have fire world, ice world, wind world, cloud world, space world. Right. Uh, that's how I think, you know, I, I, even in my normal life, I see things that way. Yeah. So I feed off those energies. It makes it difficult to function in society and reality because I see that way, you know. It's a, uh, it's kind of, I, I think directors see that way, or maybe, uh, or some directors see that way, and uh, maybe people who set scenes up in mm -hmm. Hollywood movies. Yeah. I don't know, but that, I feed off those kind of energies. Like, I'll decorate a room. Oh, yeah. I like to decorate and make a surrounding and write in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I use these cloths. Yeah. Oh, I've got five tubs of, of different cloths. Yeah. Fabric. Yeah, kind of sets the mood for you. Um, and okay, going into that, um, you were part of the production process uh, for the Green Album. I did it. How basically. important was that to you? But and how did you switch yeah. from not being a part of the production process to doing that? Actually, I didn't switch. No? On the first record, I did it too. Um, it's just, it was credited differently. Because okay. um, I wrote the entire thing in my basement. Um, like the last song in the record, Cling. Basically, I recorded that on a four track. So we took that and just remixed it. And so I wrote, produced, did everything on that. And then when it came to the record, I had to come up with all the bass parts, drum parts, with the exceptions of a couple ad libs, you know, a couple field pieces. Um, but, uh, and basically, I had to manipulate the energies in the studio, but you know, it's like, that's one of the uh, reasons my career got, because all my talents mm -hmm. uh, were not recognized. The ones that were, am the ones that were amateur and youthful and uh, they were meaty and saucy and nice, but they were part of my talent. Yeah. Those are the ones that got recognized and those are the ones that got milked. And when those weren't focused on as a whole, mm -hmm. I, I lot, people, it seemed like people, my label lost respect for me. Um, there was a merger that took place. And uh, so basically, you know, I, I left uh, Interscope and I didn't have any relationship with really anybody there with my Red album. I was with Outpost, and when Outpost went under in the merger, um, that was it for me. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you got the, the different his stories and uh, histories from some of the other uh, stigmas, you know, join in with that after so long, you know, people think different things. It's like that. I don't know if you knew about the Intervention A&E show. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people thought, oh, yeah, so that's why Days in the New disappeared or whatever. No. Well, I didn't start using drugs until I was like 20. So Immaculate, that album that mm -hmm. you worked the doors on, what was that experience like for you with the end, Ellie Woman? It was real. 
Uh, real to me is a strong word. So uh, those guys are real. When they di when they go and they uh, they leave this world, um, I tell you, it's going to be a very sad thing because those kind of people are a dying breed. That's one of my experiences in this world. Is I connected with an, maybe an old spirit or some an energy that it's just not appreciated anymore. And that's where I milked my energies from. And when you milk your energies from places that uh, that you know society and consciousness as a whole doesn't uh, recognize or uh, uh, you know what happens is. It becomes a priority thing, I guess, you know? Yeah. It's the economy. Yeah. You know? So, it was a great experience. Yeah. Um, basically, that Beautiful song, album. The End, uh, I used to, I know I said I started using drugs when I was 20, but, you know, that's not including drinking and smoking pot. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's like, I was, I was drinking and smoking pot 11, 12, and early age. I used to smoke pot and drink and uh, just get whacked out in my head and go to places when I was real young to the door, you know, when that movie came out. Yeah. You know, uh, but The End was like my favorite song and I always wanted to write an album or make music that was like The End, you know, that was epic and real and had the, a world sound, that, you know. It was an incredible version of that song. Absolutely well, beautiful. I appreciate it. Because uh, I uh, listened to it many times, many times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel the world of music has lost the appreciation for the actual art? That's what I've been talking about the whole time. Yeah. So I think you've got a lot of that. But I'll elaborate. Again, uh, it has to do with us moving away from the old spirits, you know? Uh, it's like if you look at... You know, the 30s and 40s, um, and then you look, and now 2010, uh, more people sit at home playing video games, and uh, not many people go out in the woods as much anymore, you know? Not many kids, and uh, that's a simple perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's everything, but you'd be surprised. It's the little things that become big. You can see little changes that affect things in a big way. Yeah. And from my experience, I could be totally wrong, man. I could be out of my mind and crazy. But, you know, you're asking me what I think and what I've picked up on things. And, you know, yes, I have got my ass kicked, you know, as an artist. You know, I haven't been booed really bad like the Ramones or anybody. But, yeah. Uh, I've had my fair share of taking my beating for my art, though. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh, I know this is personal, but the IRS has my royalties. I can't sit around. I have to tour. So, you know, I have to work. And uh, I've never really worked a job. And when I tried, it was like moving mountains for me. Couldn't focus. Like a typical nine to five type job? Yeah, I, I tried. I tried to work at a car wash. I tried to work, I tried to lay sod. And I tried, uh, oh, I worked in a music store for a year and a half, but all I did was uh, um, I would polish the guitars and then I would play them. And uh, I just messed with the instruments all day, pretty yeah. much. And they fired me. But it was cool because I wrote a record in the process. So, yeah. You know. But this is a lot of hard work, you know? It yeah. is. Touring? Oh, yeah, the whole, everything. Yeah. Dealing with music as a whole. Say there was a zombie apocalypse. What would be your weapon of choice? If there was a zombie apocalypse, mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting because uh, I've just been playing uh, Undead Nightmare. It's a Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Red Dead Redemption on PS3. Heard of it? Yeah. Uh, it's a Western world with the a guy that's on a horse and you can ride it. It's like Grand Theft Auto in the old Wild West. Yeah. But they have a, a gun that shoots and the bullets explode. Yeah. So basically, yeah, if uh, there's a zombie apocalypse and it was the cliche term of getting rid of their head. Yeah. Yeah, a, 
a gun that I guess I could hold a lot of ammunition. Yeah. Um, that I could make them explode so I wouldn't have to worry about their head. Right. Yeah. <laughs>